Okay, so what's the criteria we use to determine a PJC on our ECG tracing? Well, the P stands for premature, which means this complex is going to appear prior to the next expected beat. So as you're marching out your R waves, this complex will come before the next expected complex. It's premature. Now it's a PJC, which means it's coming from the junction. When the junction fires off, it's going to send a wave of electricity retrograde back through the atrial chamber. This will create an inverted P wave. Now, you can have an inverted P wave before the QRS, you may have no P wave at all, up or down, or you may have an inverted P wave after the QRS. And here's how that happens. Remember the conduction starts at the AV node and it moves in both directions simultaneously, down through the ventricles and retrograde through the atrial chambers. If the atrial chambers conduct before the ventricles, you'll have an inverted P wave prior to the QRS. If they both conduct at the same time, the QRS wins, greater voltage, the inverted P wave gets hidden in that, so you have no P wave. If the atrial chamber conducts after the ventricular chamber, you could have an inverted P wave after the QRS. Now, the PJC should have no impact on ventricular conduction, so the QRS should look normal, or honestly looks like all the rest of the QRS is within that strip. So, premature, inverted P wave, either prior to, after the QRS, or no P wave at all, and the QRS looks normal. And that's the criteria we use to determine a PJC on our ECG tracing. I'm Mark, thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.